Hello all, so now we will be discussing DFT, it is designed for testability and it falls under the subject BLSI course. So uh, let's start with the motivation to study this topic that is need of DFT. So in early stages, design and test that is designing a chip and then after the chip is being designed and manufactured, the testing. Both are different things, okay? That is design engineer and test engineer works independently of each other. That is the groups which are carrying out these two things that is design and test both are unre unrelated group okay they are not knowing what vice versa uh, each other are doing okay so first the chip is being designed by the design engineer then it is after manufacturing of this design okay the, the physical device is being tested by this test engineer so the job of test engineer is to test the device okay and see whether the devices are fault free or not the fault free device are shipped to the market okay for customers but uh, obviously all are not fault free device so the quality of this test is being determined by defective ppm that is defective parts per million this is one number only and larger than this number that is it is like score ha higher is the score good is the result okay so it is based on this defective ppm and also the another uh, main job of this test engineer is that uh, he has to test the device within a specified time limit also because times also plays a major role in testing so this was the earlier approach and which was only valid for small scale integration device and not for vlsi device so this is only valid for ssi and not for vlsi so in 1980s what happened one more approach was developed which is based on functional patterns so what happens some pattern is being generated let's say one zero one one some this kind of pattern and let's say this is one circuit okay might be this circuit is feeding to another some gates or some another device okay similarly this is also and this is also coming from some another logic okay this is also coming some from some another logic and this is going outside like so on so some functional pattern is being generated and it is being applied to the input and it is being allowed to navigate through this whole sequential depth okay and uh, af what is the need of this navigation what will happen by this navigation so let me first of all explain how it works so let's say this is the end gate of some complex circuit okay one end gate i am just this is one complex circuit hole from this any one end gate i am choosing so in order to have one over here we must have one and one over here okay but by some defect if we have zero over here and but still we are getting one over here then we will say that yes the device is being device is having defect okay this is the fault we will immediately say like this so same thing in short if we are able to control and observe each and every node of this circuit of any circuit okay that is if i want to observe this or this or if i have to control what is meaning of control controllability definition is that the difficulty of setting any node or any line to a particular logic that is either logic 0 or logic 1 so difficulty in setting logic 0 is called controllability of 0 and difficulty of setting any logic or any line to logic high that is logic one is controllability of one okay like that and what is observability observability means that difficulty of observing that is over here the one is coming suppose that one one is the input and the output is one one but we can't observe it directly because this end gate is a part of some major complex circuit so we must have some some mechanism that propagates this one to main output of the device so if the suppose that some whole complex circuit is output y so this one which we have to observe which we want to observe must propagate through this things okay so for that some functional patterns were developed and the patterns were given and they are given in such a way that we can control and observe each and every point okay each and every node of the complex circuit so this functional patterns are being navigated and 
uh, what happens a fault simulation or fault grading tool this is one tool simulation tool was used to quantify the effectiveness of this functional patterns and if the applied functional patterns did not reach the target fault then what we will do we will add some extra functional patterns also okay but unfortunately this approach also has some limitation and the limitation is that it can't cover the fault coverage beyond 80 percent okay so this approach was also failed so here comes the need of dft so the conclusion is that of whole discussion just i am concluding conclusion is that devices let me write designing devices without paying attention to test results in increased cost and also decrease in quality so it might also happen that some designs that were otherwise best in the class with the regards to functionality and performance fails commercially okay due to high test cost or poor quality so this also happen so all these problems combinedly leads towards need of dft that is designed for testability so from next lecture we will discuss in detail about this controllability and observability okay so that's all for this lecture hope you like it